welcome to another Sunday morning of online worship with Woodmont United Church of Christ. I'm here as always kicking things off with what we call our welcome coffee, or as I have it today, a welcome water bottle. It's a time to gather wherever and whenever you're watching this as we all make our way through the digital doors of our online sanctuary. Now, I don't know about you, but I can't believe we are already halfway through 2021. I feel like we were just having New Year's Eve and everybody was celebrating this new year and we were making all these exciting um, resolutions that we were gonna do. Some of us were gonna go out and exercise more. Some of us were gonna give things up. I don't know how that's working for you, but for me, I definitely lost track of the exercise part. <laughs> Sometimes we get so excited to do these things or we've grown up doing these different things in our lives and then we kind of lose steam on them. I think prayer is a lot like that, right? We grow up learning our prayers in Sunday school and we do them in church and then somehow in our everyday lives we kind of give that up. We forget how to pray as a, a regular practice. But just like exercise, we have this muscle memory that's built into us, something deep in us that reminds us how to do it, even if we're a little rusty at first. And so if you have been out of the habit of praying for a while, if you've been out of the habit of going to church for a while, this is a great time to see what that muscle memory, that energy, that spirit that's inside of you, how that is connecting you to God today. Shake off the rust and see what happens. It doesn't have to be some grand, glorious prayer, as I've said before. Prayer is just talking to God. It's a conversation, one-on-one, -on -one, between you and God. Things you want to celebrate, things you want to ask for help with. Any time is a great time to come to God in prayer. So try it today and let's see what happens. Good morning, everyone. Well, God is really here. Like the spring rain, 
Good morning, everyone. As you join in the spiritual fellowship of our online service, it is a pleasure each week to welcome you to online worship with Woodmont United Church of Christ in Milford, Connecticut. My name is Kim Cartwright. I am the interim pastor of the congregation, and we welcome you every week to be with us, to pray with us, to praise God together, and to serve God in the world around us when we leave. I do pray that our worship together from our homes will be inspiring and uplifting to you today as we continue our practice of being at a safe distance <clears throat> during the COVID pandemic. When the time becomes right, and we plan that to become right very soon, it will be wonderful when that day arrives when we can regather again in person in our sanctuary for worship. The plan is to begin that on July 11. And so I hope that you will join us. We also have an outdoor service on the front lawn of our church on June 27th. So please join us there too. Bring your own lawn chairs uh, so you'll have a place to sit. A warm, warm welcome to anyone who is a new visitor with us uh, this week at the online service. Please find on your screen our invitation to a virtual coffee hour immediately following the service and click on that invitation so you can we can see you you can see us and enjoy some informal conversation for a little while come everyone and let us give thanks to god for this is a day that the lord is making let us rejoice and be glad in it let us join together in the call to worship reach for the rainbow of god's covenant it speaks of God's promise to all humankind. Blessed are they who create with God toward fulfilling the promise of a future where peace and justice shall reign. Reach for the light that comes from God. Blessed are we for God's word lights our path, revealing a faithful way forward. Reach for the one who said, I am the light of the world. Blessed are we when, we when with open hands and receptive hearts we are led by Christ who sends us and assures us, remember, I am with you always. Glory, O Creator, for bringing life to earth. Glory to our Savior for sharing your life and worth. Glory to the Spirit for guiding all rebirth, now and forever. Amen. Glory, O Creator, for bringing life to earth. Glory to our Savior for sharing your life and worth. Glory to the Spirit for guiding our rebirth.
Now let us join together in the prayer of invocation. We thank you, redeeming God, that among your greatest gifts to us are faith, hope, and love. Faith that brings forth courage and resolve to serve you and our neighbors, both in good times and in difficult times. Hope that never gives up your high calling, for we believe in your reign that will one day be fulfilled. And love, the greatest of these, that nothing can defeat and nothing can excel. Hear us, O God, as with adoration we lift our grateful voices. Good morning. Just as I was getting ready to record this Mission Minute, my iPhone went totally blank. Couldn't figure out what was going on with it. I tried all the buttons on it. That didn't work. I checked the internet connection. Seemed to be fine. Then I said, well, let me plug, plug it in. And sure enough, my battery had gone down to like 1%. So the uh, iPhone turned off. That's kind of like a parallel for what I want to talk about to you this morning. I want to talk about the STC. Now that sounds like it might be a disease or maybe it's a new synthetic drug, but it's not. STC stands for Strengthening the Church. It's a way to provide funds to churches can plug in to revitalize their ministries. It always occurs during the season of Pentecost. Pentecost, remember, is the birthday of the church. The disciples were feeling, even though they had time with the risen Christ, they were feeling powerless. They were afraid of the authorities. They didn't have any real strength to proclaim the message of Jesus Christ to the world. And so the Spirit came upon them. And so the strength in the church provides funds to help churches revitalize themselves, it helps to begin new churches, it helps to encourage people to enter into the ministry. So grants are provided for this. One church right here in Connecticut, in London, a 400-year-old First Congregation of Church, received a grant to help them reach out to do outreach in a very urban setting in that community. This is just one way that your offering gives help to give power, empowerment to churches. So please give, if you can, to strengthen the church. Thank you very much. Good morning, Woodmont UCC. Every week this year, during a good trouble moment, we shine a light on racism in this country. Jesus said, I have come into the world as light so that whoever believes in me may not remain in darkness. Good trouble moments will not be easy or comfortable. Looking at things hiding in the dark never is, but we are called by Jesus to shine a light in the darkness in order to overcome it. Thank you for being on this journey with us. When you see something that is not right, not fair, yeah. not just, yeah. say something, yeah. do something, get in trouble, good trouble, necessary trouble. For today's good trouble moment, I want to point us toward a holiday which for most of my life I didn't even know it existed. It's a holiday called Juneteenth. Now I've gotten much more familiar with it in recent years, but until Apple started showing it on my calendar that June 19th is coming, it's Juneteenth. Finally, I looked it up and learned what it was about. You see, Juneteenth is the celebration of the end of slavery in America. In 1863, during the Civil War, President Lincoln issued what many of us famously know as the Emancipation Proclamation, outlawing slavery in America. This set more than three million slaves living in the Confederate States free. There's definitely a cause for celebration here, unless you're a slave who lived so far down south that the news hadn't reached you yet. You see, there was clearly no news media on TV. There was no people typing it on social media. So it took two whole years until Union troops made their way down to Galveston, Texas, for the residents of that place to learn that there was no more slavery. And so the, the slaves who were now freed began to celebrate with prayer and with dance and with feasting and song. They sang spirituals. And a year later, the first official Juneteenth celebrations took place in Texas. 
one of the original observances was prayer meetings and singing, but people who celebrated also wore new clothes as a way of representing this new freedom they had. And before you knew it, this became uh, an annual tradition in other states as more and more people began celebrating it. This Saturday, June 19th, from 10 a.m. to 4 p.m. on the uh, Milford Green Gazebo, there's going to be a celebration with speakers and vendors and all different things. So there's an action item for the week. I hope you'll go out to the green or you'll do some other celebration somewhere. Let's commemorate and celebrate this momentous occasion and this turning point in a page in our country's history. And although there's much work to be done, hopefully we can start by making Juneteenth much more than just some obscure holiday on our calendars and make it a day that we truly remember. Thank you. Our first scripture lesson this morning is from Genesis 12, verses 1 to 3. Now the Lord said to Abram, Go from your country and your kindred and your father's house to the land that I will show you. I will make of you a great nation, and I will bless you and make your name great, so that you will be a blessing. I will bless those who bless you, and the ones who curse you I will curse, and in you all the families of the earth shall be blessed. Our second scripture reading from the New Testament is from Matthew 28, verses 16 to 20. Now the eleven disciples went to Galilee, to the mountain to which Jesus had directed them. When they saw him, they worshipped him, but some doubted. And Jesus came and said to them, all authority in heaven and on earth has been given to me. Go, therefore, and make disciples of all nations, baptizing them in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit, and teaching them to obey everything that I have commanded you. And remember, I am with you always to the end of the age. Thus ends the reading of our morning scriptures. It's easy to get caught up thinking about ourselves too much. Um, yes, each of us is capable of really beautiful things, but we're capable of so much more together. This song is based on Paul's words in 1 Corinthians, um, and it's called Many Parts, because many parts make a whole. <laughs> should say to the hand because I'm not a hand I don't belong it wouldn't for that reason stop being part of the body if one suffers all suffer too and that which seems weak has great value Rejoice too. We need each other. Yeah, we need each other. Many parts form a whole. If we were all the same, then what would be? For many parts form one body. I can't tell the hand and the head can't tell the feet I don't need you Oh, we need each other Yeah, we need each other Many parts form a whole We are branches on one body
I'd like to talk to you today about the church when gathered and the church when scattered, where we gather together, but then we are sent out for a purpose and a mission. I keep some treasures in a family Bible in our home. They have some of the parting words of loved ones who either said them or wrote them down for me to save. Long ago, some. I have them in, a original, in their original handwriting, and they are treasures to me. My maternal grandmother, Lillian Kimball, that's where I get the name Kimball from, in her late 90s wrote the following lines of poetry at Christmas at 97 years of age. She said, Jesus, how wonderful that he comes to us here to tell us if only we trust upon him, he will always be with us to dwell in our hearts and our actions and motives and never depart. That was her Christmas poem that year. My grandmother often said, live as Jesus lives. And when I asked her one day, why do you speak of him in the present tense? She simply looked at me and smiled and she said, he lives. You see, she knew the meaning of Easter. She placed her faith and trust in him who lives. When my dad's health was failing, he told me one day in his room at Yale New Haven Hospital a number of things. First, he said, take care of your family, something that he had always done himself. And my father also said that he thought I had married a wonderful person, and he was so right about that. Second, he said to take care of and encourage my mother, who would be on her own and by herself, whom he loved dearly. And third, my father surprised me by saying a word of theology, which he seldom did, but he said this time, he said, I love you, and so does God. One more treasure I keep in my special Bible is my mom's handwritten words that say, Always keep a small place in your heart for me, but also go on to fulfill your God-given potential and be happy. I love you and so does God, she said. And I believe that the, that was where my father learned those last few words of what he had to say as well, was from what my mother said over the years, I love you and so does God. I suspect that uh, my grandmother and my father and my mother were all somehow ordained to pass on a baton of faith to me. Each in his or her own way, each passed on a legacy of faith to me, giving me a sense of mission and purpose in life that I carry to this very day. Namely, that legacy is a faith in Jesus alive and a mission we pursue in his name, a remembrance of and love for family, a desire to fulfill one's God-given potential, and faith in the good news of God's gracious love in Christ for all of us and fleshing those out and what they mean is the rest of life. These special people in my life, like runners passing a baton on to the next runner in line, gave me these things to carry into the future. The Gospel of John, chapter 20, verse 19 and following, recounts one of Jesus' resurrection appearances to his disciples and some of his parting words to them, things he wanted them to know and to carry into their future. Again, the giving of his parting words is something like the runner of a foot race passing a baton onto the next runner in line to carry forward. His words to them are very amazing if you stop and really think about them. Again, the giving of his parting words, something like a runner passing on his baton, and these were the words he gave. He said, Peace be with you. As the Father, or the Creator, 
has sent me, even so I send you. It is startling to think that what Jesus was doing is now being passed on for us to do. But this passage, combined with others in the Bible, could hardly make it more clear, namely that what Jesus had been doing in the world, his followers were to continue to do in the world. That was the baton handed to them, and now it is a baton handed to you and to me. Ever since that time, the charge to us, the church of today, is the same. If in, in carefully and prayerfully chosen words, our congregation's vision statement reminds us that what Jesus came to accomplish in the world, we are to continue accomplishing in his name and spirit. Christ's mission is the church's primary mission to which we ought always to devote our time, our energy, and our resources. When you observe Jesus and his early disciples, you see a twofold pattern. First, he invited them in to a fellowship for the learning and mutual support of faith friends together in a community that we now call church. He invited them in. And second, then Jesus, after Jesus' his disciples were after his disciples were together, his followers, he then sent them out to carry on the mission. The mission was a worldwide mission, not just something for themselves. Not just something for the congregation. It was from all the world around. He invited and gathered them into a fellowship with himself. His spirit, that, that, that's what the church is, a group of people in fellowship and faith in Christ. His disciples were taught, they were supported, inspired, and filled with his spirit, just as we are. Then he sent them out, out into the world, to make a difference in society, in the wider world, bringing healing and justice to all sorts of conditions, often challenging the secular status quo to become transformed into a more faithful world, showing the love and grace of God to all people. He invited them in, and then he sent them out. One instance is in, Mount, in the Gospel of Mark, chapter 6, verse 30. The apostles returned to Jesus after having a, a long day and a tour of duty, if you will, and told him all that they had been doing and teaching. And he said to them, Come away by yourself to a deserted place and rest for a while. They had been so busy they hardly had time to eat, it says. They gathered for fellowship with Jesus and each other, for mutual support, learning, and inspiration, just like members of churches do before going back out there again, a little like going indoors to rest and then going back outdoors to use your acquired energy to do something good. This back and forth movement between fellowship as a congregation and then going out to serve in Christ's name in the wider community is still a call, the call upon us today. One church's vision statement affirms the love we know in Christ, and then adds the words, inspired by this love, this love, we are sent out of our church into active mission in our beloved wider community. In the gospel today, Jesus startles his disciples awake from their recent and disheartening experience of their deserting him, followed by his crucifixion, but instead of leaving them in that state, Jesus appears and he says, As the Father has sent me, even so I send you. He is saying to them and to us as well, I look to you with confidence. I lean my cause against your loyalty and your faithfulness. I leave my hopes unafraid in your hands. 
The dream has not faded away. The adventure of faith has not failed. You now know I am alive. And with the assurance of my continuing help, I pass this baton to you to carry into the world and into the future. In fellowship with me and with one another, you are going to contribute to making the dream come true, the vision fulfilled. My kingdom will prevail. It already has. It's in your heart. It prevails in your heart first by faith and then will one day be completely fulfilled in all of creation in God's good time. May each one of you treasure holding the baton that Christ hands to you that you may all do your individual parts and do them well together in prospering our fellowship, strengthening our efforts and the church to fulfill Christ's mission in our beloved wider community. Committing your faith and life to following Christ opens the way to an amazing adventure that often requires leaving behind what one writer calls the land of the familiar. In recounting some of history's earliest recorded events, the Bible emphasizes the faithfulness to God. Often, It often requires people to step out in faith to be like pioneers. Pioneers in our times and places often leaving behind our so-called land of the familiar. This is clearly the case in Genesis 12, if you need an illustration biblically, where the Lord says to Abram, later known as Abraham, Abram, go from your country, he says. Leave the land of the familiar behind and your kindred and your father's house to the land and go to the land that I will show you. And I will bless you so that you will be a blessing to others. That is so like the message of Jesus. Knowing and following our Lord blesses us. And then if you faithfully carry that baton of faith and give it to others to carry as well, your life becomes a blessing to others as well. Another well-known writer suggests that when you personally accept Jesus' invitation to be an active part of his fellowship and his mission and you follow through, you become more alive with what life is all about and intended to be than you've ever been before. Think about that. I conclude with a short poem that goes like this. There was a very cautious man who never laughed or played. He never risked, he never tried, he never sang or prayed. And when one day he passed away, his insurance was denied, for since he never really lived, they claimed he had never died. <clears throat> if you really want to live for all you're really worth, and believe me, God says your life is worth a lot, then remember first what Jesus said, I am the way, the truth, the life. And then let your heart hear his invitation today. Come to me, all ye who are weary and heavy laden, and then accept today his invitation to find and to join the fellowship of his disciples, a church family, to signify that you have this very day made or renewed a pledge in your heart to be one of Christ's disciples yourself letting it be a life-changing, life-affirming moment, knowing that following Christ may indeed lead you into doing new things away from the land of what has been previously familiar to you and perhaps even too comfortable for you at times. Saying yes to Christ's invitation to be a disciple does come with two very wonderful guarantees. Two of which are these. One, your life will be blessed. 
two, your life will be a blessing to others. Who wouldn't want that to be true? God bless you as you make your decision to follow. Let us think about those we would pray for today before I offer a pastoral prayer for us all. Let us spend a moment of quiet to do that in our hearts and in our minds. O Holy One, we surely do pray for the people we have just named in our hearts and minds that each one will know the assurance, comfort, and encouragement of your spirit and our heartfelt prayers for them. We pray together in the fellowship of your spirit, praying to hear you speaking your word to us in the midst of the many current issues of our times the pandemic, the movements to overcome racial prejudice in our land and world, the many rallies and protests calling for fairness and justice, the illness of a world infected with racial prejudice, the extreme sadness of precious lives lost by uncontrolled acts of violence, the financial struggles of the unemployed, sometimes homeless people, those who are struggling to rebuild life and home that have been recently damaged or destroyed by natural catastrophes of fire, wind, floods, or rain, and the fears and uncertainties in the lives of children and youth growing up amidst these things. O God, grant us a vision of your world as your love would have it. A world where the weak are protected and none go hungry or poor. A world where the riches of creation are shared and everyone can enjoy them. A world where different races and cultures live together as one family with harmony and mutual respect. A world where peace is built upon justice and justice is guided by unconditional love and concern for others. Give us the inspiration and courage to build it by your grace and by your power through Jesus Christ who teaches us to pray, saying, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, And forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever and ever. Amen. Coming to announcements now, I want to remind you that in just two Sundays, we will be gathering outside again on the front lawn of the church for another in-person worship service. That'll be 1030 on the front lawn. Bring your lawn chairs and let's make a joyful noise together. Let's offer prayers and thanksgiving and listen to the word of God for the day. And uh, if you can't make it, don't worry about it. We're going to still have our online service right here as always. So you won't miss anything. Also, even more exciting than that, though, we will be gathering shortly after on July 11th inside the sanctuary after over a year away. So we will be having our first indoor worship service on July 11th at 1030 a.m. And uh, our regathering team is working really hard to make sure we have all the proper safety precautions. We're taking all the right steps because we want to make sure this is the safest experience possible for everyone in attendance. So I hope you can make it. We'll have more information on what that all entails very soon. Also, though, if you um, are too far away to be able to make it in person or you're not ready to attend in person, that is perfectly fine. We will have um, live streaming for this service. So rather than a pre-recorded service like this, you will be watching everything happen in real time inside the sanctuary. So wherever you're attending from, we can't wait to have you join us for that. 
it will be great to see one another and to be together for worship and prayer. As always, the Purple Pantry Box is always taking and always looking for your donations. So here's a list of what we're looking for right now. You can drive by the church, put it in the box outside at the front of our driveway. Um, and I will again show this list at the end of the service. So you'll have another chance to write anything down that you want. And uh, if you're at the grocery store, maybe grab one or two items and bring them by. And they go a long way to helping those in need. I have been uh, really enjoying the tradition of people sending in different photos and videos of things that are happening in their lives, things that they've come across that they just thought were neat, different celebrations that they wanted to share with all of us here. And so each week we put them in our newsletter, the Woodmont Weekly, and we feature them right here in the service. So here's what came in this week. And uh, I guess all the Submissions came from within my own house. <laughs> this first one is from my wife, Melissa. It's a uh, stuffed lizard on the rocks and not the best at camouflage, I suppose, but it sure looks cute nonetheless. Also, um, a shout out to a brand new local restaurant in Milford, Flava and Spice. Melissa took this uh, picture uh, from inside their restaurant as they're representing their Jamaican colors. They have some fantastic Jamaican cuisine. So uh, it's right by the Cone Zone in Milford. So go by and check it out. It's always great to support uh, new businesses that are popping up in town. Next, this one's from me. It's uh, an angel statue that I took over at my job. And it's by this little prayer garden for uh, preschoolers. And I walked by and the flowers caught my eye and the angel caught my eye. It was just a beautiful moment. And last, this cool basketball photo that I took. You would think I had just made uh, a game-winning shot, but really I was just holding the basketball in my left hand and took the photo in my right hand, so I cheated a little. If you're looking to give to the church, you can do so by writing out a check to Woodmont United Church of Christ and mailing it to 1000 New Haven Avenue, Milford, Connecticut, 06460. And if this is for the mission of the month, uh, Strengthen the Church, you can just write Strengthen the Church or Mission down below in the memo line. If you'd like to give online, you can hop on our website, woodmontucc.org, click on the Giving tab, and pay safely and securely through PayPal. And just like if you are writing a check, you can select if this is for your general pledge or if this is for mission. And last but not least, I always want to make sure I mention this because you never know who will be listening and who could really use this information, and it could be you. We have the Deacons Fund, we have the Pastors Discretionary Fund, and we have a care coordinator here to help if you are in any sort of financial need, if you are in need of other supplies or other assistance, whatever we can do, we want to help you. So all the information for them is down below in the description to this video. And if you are uh, watching on a TV or a device where you can't see the description, just hop on our website, woodmontucc.org, and you can send us a message through there and we will make sure that the proper people get in touch with you so we can help you out. And now let's go on to Bruce for today's hymn of the day. Join me now in this beautiful hymn, hymn number 465, Teach Me, O Lord, Your Holy Way. <laughs>
as we depart our spiritual fellowship of online worship this morning, I remind you God has given each of us a mind to think with, hands to work with, and a heart with the courage to do what love requires. May all of this be in God's service this week. Take this good, take this good news into the world with you that the world may be blessed with Jesus' way of life through seeing it in you. If you have received a blessing of worship today, take that blessing, bless the world around you with it. There are countless opportunities every day. Pray to God for your eyes to be open to see them and your ears to hear them. And go forth knowing that life is never lived alone, but rather knowing by faith the love of God, the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, and the fellowship of God's Holy Spirit, always with us, everywhere, even forevermore. Amen. Amen. Yeah, we need each other. 